all of you overwhelmingly attractive YouTube goers. This is Jabba, and welcome to the first look at the Code Spells Alpha, release 0.001A. So for those of you who know, don't know, Code Spells is a game where you get to play as a wizard in an open sandbox world. But unlike most games, where you have a preset um, abilities, like, you know, ability select, skill set. There we go. Preset skill set. In this game, you get to craft your own skill set, i.e. craft your own spells. And you do this using code, JavaScript to be specific. Now, I find this concept extremely awesome. So as soon as I saw the Kickstarter campaign, I backed it all the way to the alpha. And here we are in the alpha build. 0.001a. Now, keep in mind, this is a very bare-bones early version, so it is not really representative of the final product. I, I just gotta put that disclaimer out there, because, you know, politics. But even in its current state, it is very entertaining to play, just because of the nature of what it is. So, when we first start the game, the alpha, we, are, we get a few preset spells, which are Dig, Explosion, Hex, Lift Object, Lift Sand, Pin, Pool, Circle, Pool, Push Shield, Push Circle, Push Spiral, and Trench. Okay? So those are a few simple dev-made spells in the Earth category. Now we also have Water, Fire, Air, and eventually Life categories of spells, but in this version of the Alpha, only Earth is accessible. And the coding kit, or coding toolbox, I guess we should call it, is not fully fleshed out, as you can see over here when we go into spell edit. Um, we don't have a ton of different options, but we have enough to make it very interesting, as I just previously stated. I've been playing around this game for, I don't know, about 30 minutes already, and I am pretty impressed. Just, but mainly by the concept, and these floating rocks, because they are very fun, floaty rocks. So, before we get into the actual coding aspect of the game, I just wanted to show you a few features of this floating island. By the way, the devs have stated that um, floating islands are going to be the main landforms of the game, so usually if you're playing the game, you're probably going to be on a floating island, which I think is really cool. And let's take a moment to admire this skybox with other floating islands and a planet in the background and beautiful colored clouds and stars out when the sun is out. It's just, it's just great. It's great artwork. Kudos to the artist. Anyway, so some of the main features are these weird dinosaur toads, dino toads, that are chasing right now. Um, so the devs had planned to not add living creatures really until later on in the development process, but they decided to throw us backers a bone and add some lovely creatures to mess around with. Now I tried and true way to kill these things is to use the pre-made spell Lift Object, and what that does is pretty self-explanatory. It just lifts objects straight into the air. And if you shoot enough orbs, which one of those is an orb, it applies enough force to launch them into the upper atmosphere, and when they fall, they will take a poop load of damage and die. I think that one died. So yeah, fun stuff. Throwing innocent little angry creatures into the air and killing them. That's one thing you can do already. And who doesn't love to do that? Anyways, so besides that, we have some a lovely little mountain up here with giant crystal spires. The devs have stated that they plan to make those indi indicative of the environment around the crystals. So, you know, if they're on a volcano, then they might be red and hot to the touch or something. You'll probably get a message. Or if, you know, you're in the Arctic or approaching the Arctic, then they might get, you know, colder, white, or blue color and if you're near like I don't know a pack of water elementals then they might get swirly and make different sounds that kind of thing um, so there's that beautiful mountain range we have what is did he survive being launched into the air or she, he or she well it needs to be launched again because I don't want it to eat me out of sight out of mind right anyways there's this water that goes all the way around the edge of the island. Did it survive again? Oh no, there's just more nests over here. That's new. Okay, so apparently there are three nesting locations. Woot! 
discovering something in a video. So, the three nesting locations for these dino toads are the sand island, over there on what I'm calling the south side of the island, there's a little ridge by the water, and then I guess here as well, there are two nests, one right there and one right there, and this will be the east side of the island, and oh dear, oh dear, we, we, we have a casualty, people. Rest in peace, my friend. Rest in peace. Oh, did I launch one over there? I missed. I have a terrible aim. Anyways. And so besides those features, there's one last thing I want to show you guys about this floating island that I find pretty cool. Is this dome temple thingy. Now currently, it has a very special effect. And I'll be quiet so you can hear it. Oh, I guess it's a bug. Well, it's alpha, so that's to be expected. There's an echo effect in here. But what's supposed to be happening is, every other time I've tried it, these crystals, um, they make music. The closer you get to them, they make louder music. But I guess it's bugging out right now, which is very good for videos. But yeah, if you own the alpha and you haven't noticed that yet, then give it out. Give it a check, you know. Check it out. Just walk up to it and there'll be beautiful echoing ambient music. So that's pretty much, you know, the island in a nutshell. You've got dino toad nests and mountains and beautiful floaty turquoise rocks. So before we close out the video of this nice little first look tour thing, I'm, let's, let's, just, let's just write a little spell, shall we? So we're going to go to earth spells because that's the only kind of spell you can create right now. And we're going to go to new spell. And here we are. So this is a visual code editor called Blocky, and the devs are using this to make coding spells more accessible than it would be if we had to write it out in JavaScript longhand. Because, I mean, look at that, yikes. So, so far, um, the, the first new spells will on create, so whenever we push the left mouse button, it'll set an orb speed to medium. And let's make that fast, because we want to be fast. And then on hit, whenever it hits anything, it'll set the orb speed to stopped. Now that's pretty boring, so let's spice it up a little bit. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to orb powers, and we're going to create a connection between the orb and whatever it hits. So that, let's say, the orb moves, then it'll drag that thing along with it, because it's an elastic connection. It'll act like more like a rubber band than a you know solid bar welding things together. And then another cool feature is that there's actually an activate function, I guess it's called. So we're going to go to orb control. Here we go. And on activate, and we activate things by pressing F, what we're going to do is we're going to go into orb blah, 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 movement. Set the orb speed to very fast. And what's the last thing? Oh, yes. Orb movement. We're going to set orb rotation before the movement, just to make it work, to down. We're going to call this spell Meteor, and if it works, it should allow us to make meteors. So let's try this. Three, two, one. Oh yeah. So now, but see, the cool thing about this is that since it's on activate, so we can stick one to each one of these little floating turquoise rocks and shoot them all down at once, like a meteor shower. And of course, the more orbs you have, the stronger the connection will be, so the faster it'll go down. So you can either, you know, spread all your orbs out using, I, I guess I, I should talk about that. The mana in the bottom right-hand corner dictates, you know, your spells, like in most games. So... You can either use all your mana on one orb and make it go down really fast, or you can spread your mana out over multiple different, you know, rocks, and they will descend at a slower rate. Oh, I guess I totally missed that one floating rock over there. Let's try to hit it. There we go. But you'll be able to do them at a time. And a few things I have noticed, if rocks fall on you, they will do damage. And you can move these giant boulders. So, we're gonna do one little test here. On camera. I haven't actually tried it yet. 
So let's hope this works. So on create set orb speed to medium, that works. And on hit, we've got to create an elastic connection, which is on powers. You need to remember that. And then, doo -doo, where is it? Where is it? Lock orb to play a rotation at distance. I wonder if we need a distance for this. Yes, we do need a distance. Okay. So we're going to go in and add a distance here. Undo new spell. And we got to go to math to add distances because math has numbers and distance has their numbers. We're going to go to 15. Why don't we? There we go. So now, what should happen is there we go. We can haul around a giant boulder. And because those evil dino toads have crushed me so many times, we're going to exact revenge with a giant boulder. So let's go see if this works. Oh, oh, yes, get crushed, get crushed. Um, it's, it's not working. Oh my gosh, it's not working. Come back, boulder. Ah, no, run away, no, no. Oh, oh man. Wait, did I catch a glimpse of the face? Was that a female face? Is that why I am so bootylicious? Folks, we're gonna have to test this out before the end of the video. I was being very laggy for some reason. Probably because of all the orbs I shot out. Hmm. Well, we may have to end the video here. Anyways, thank you all for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this first look at the Code Spells Alpha. We are definitely going to test out looking at the face. There will- oh, it's fixed. Okay, since it's fixed, we are going to test out to see if we are female. If we are female, I will start referring to myself as a she. And it would explain the bootyliciousness. So we're going to launch this boulder into the air. Try to land right under it. And then... Do -do 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 -do. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. That is definitely a female front half. That is beautiful. Anyways, once again, thank you all for watching. This has been Jubba, your host. Your very first look at the Code Spells Alpha. Stay sexy, YouTube. Stay sexy.